Welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Kevin E, and let's get started this week in Fantasyland, where there has been some additional progress on that back wall of the castle area in Fantasyland. You'll see a couple of different angles here where the steel structures are now being covered by wood. And then we're going to have a look over the wall into the Prince er Eric's castle area, and you can see some of the coaster creeping in there. I'll look over to the left from there, closer to the Beauty and the Beast area, and you can see kind of this French architecture back over towards uh, Prince Eric's Castle and some more of these uh, support structures for the coaster are coming into play, coming into view and uh, it won't be too long now before we won't be able to see past these support structures into the Little Mermaid area behind it and that's, that's already happening with the uh, with the large lift hill here and uh, this girder, this beam here is extending out uh, that wasn't there last week so this is a view also over the wall into the area close to the Pinocchio Village House. Uh, I thought this was an interesting use of arches. It looks almost kind of Harry Potter-like the way uh, the arches are meeting the rockwork right behind it. This is a new sign in Main Street of Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. They've had a few of these added to uh, places around the, um, the near the back entrance or the back uh, distribution center for sorcerers. That's in Liberty Square. This one is in Town Square pointing to the firehouse or the main one. Now this is not new, but it is new to me. I've not been uh, here during the daytime as often over in Adventureland by the Pirates League. Apparently they drag out these mannequins every morning and uh, do them up a little bit fresh to get people interested in doing the uh, Pirates thing. In the Pirates of Adventure queue, you'll find several spots, and this is one of maybe, I don't know, six or seven, where they've boarded things up uh, looking out into the into sort of the uh, uh, themed queue areas. And here's uh, almost at the end of the line, the boarding up of the area that was um, a, a grounded or dry dock ship out there, and that's covered up on all sides, as well as from the back side here, just going around that last corner toward the loading zone. Now what's going on is uh, presumably something associated with that new, um, with the next generation game that's coming. There has been some rumors out there, nothing official by Disney yet, uh, that there will be an Adventureland-based game, sort of more like Kim Possible than Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, uh, featuring things that um, that bounce around and move around, little animatronics, uh, and that it is to be um, said to be centered in um, Adventureland alone. And this makes a lot of sense because there are a lot of these little boxes that have appeared um, in the last several weeks and months even, uh, in parts of the Caribbean, and as we'll see, there are several of them as well in the Jungle Cruise. Now, here in the Jungle Cruise, uh, they've cut away the foliage, so these characters are always out. I'm not sure what's up with that move, uh, but here's some of these boxes that I'm, you know, I'm just not sure they've always been there in the Jungle Cruise, and so there, there might well be something to this rumor about an Adventureland game. Again, something new to me, not sure how long it's been there, this um, painting and the labeling of the fruit cart in Liberty Square as the Liberty Square Market. In Mickey's Philhar Magic, this is the exit. That's the store next to Mickey's Philhar Magic. It's under just an annual refurbishment. And just outside um, the stroller area, we found a couple of uh, wagons. And I'm not certain of whether wagons are allowed in the park. Um, probably they just snuck by the main gate, although I don't think they're supposed to be there. Normally, you don't have things pulled behind you allowed in the theme parks. This is the Golden Oak Eatery. It's the one next to Pecos Bill in uh, the beginning of Frontierland. And they once had um, rather unique items like flatbreads and so forth. And I, I don't often go by, so this may have been a month's old change, but now that's a, an emphasis on um, chicken nuggets and chicken breast sandwich. So a little bit more uh, plain of a menu item. Star Wars Weekends is coming. In anticipation of that, they've released a few uh, new menu, item, uh, menu items, merchandise items, and this one caught my eye. These are pins um, that show Star Wars characters going on the Disney rides. If you remember that commercial uh, some time ago for uh, Star Tours coming to Disneyland, they did something like that as well. And I thought this was a cute way of doing it. This is set was, I believe, $25 for the four. This is the DVC stand in Frontierland, and I thought I would just kind of highlight the look here that um, the cast member is wearing a DVC ballpark kind of cap, and I thought that seemed a little bit at odds with the Frontierland costume. Speaking of merchandise, here's the one of the newer Vinylmation sets called the Robot Series. It looks kind of mixed and matched, something like you'll see at the Droid Series. We'll talk about that in just a minute. We're going to check into Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is on Mother's Day on Sunday that just happened, and at many of the parks they were handing out carnations to mothers as they came into the park. Uh, only in the morning time, though. It didn't last all day. 
the restrooms in the uh, Africa section of the park. I'm not certain whether this poster is new. It certainly looks new to me. Um, and in fact, it kind of looks like they might just take down posters every so often and put up new ones. Uh, this is kind of the one time in Disney theming where that's okay because that's supposed to look old as though people have been doing exactly that for some time. We're here to ride the safari where they've undergone some changes. Uh, no longer in the queue do we get any kind of video at all, let alone a story with um, Wilson Mutua and Catherine Jobson, the uh, researchers. It's just this screen saying Harambe Wildlife Reserve the whole time in the queue. What they've done is they've removed the entire uh, storyline going with the ride. There is no narration whatsoever coming from a fake plane or overhead. Um, in fact, when you're inside the truck, it's just you and your tour guide talking the whole time. With one exception, they play the music. Now here is what the scene looks like, I'm sorry it's blurry, right after we've broken through those gates at the end of the ride, when we're supposedly normally chasing poachers. Now this time we don't chase anybody, um, and our guide just tells us, well, we've seen a lot of great animals, let's say we cut short this two-week trip, and so she turns to the corner here, and this zone was not previously grassed in like this. This zone, as well as the one um, after the waterfalls, which are still on, the fountains, um, has now been grassed in because this will be a new home to the zebras. Now they're not there yet, uh, and this is the former campsite. You see there's still a kind of a fence there, as well as a fence here where there formerly there was a plane and then the truck holding Little Red. Uh, that's all gone now, uh, presumably just for the zebras will be on the left side of your um, car as you're traveling through that last zone. And then a couple of extra boxes added there. On our way out uh, through the oasis, we noticed that the anteater signs had been covered up. I don't know what happened to the anteater, but he's not apparently in his enclosure at the moment. Switching parks to Epcot, this is the Morocco Pavilion, where uh, I'm not sure how obvious it is from the way the, the color works in this photo, but this building has been repainted. It is more orange than it used to be. This is what the color used to look like. So let me flip back a screen. There we are again. Uh, you see that the main building has been painted and then the side building has not. We're going to zoom in on this area here now where you see they've added a second hidden Mickey in those Morocco plates that they've uh, long had the one at the bottom. Switching parks yet again, this is the back entrance to um, DHS, Hollywood Studios, also called the Auxiliary Entrance. It's been under construction here for some time, and in fact the construction continues along this road all the way out uh, toward that next stoplight. There's the Auxiliary Entrance. Uh, someday soon this will not be an entrance. It will only be the exit and only buses will be able to enter through this back entrance. We're here for Fantasmic, where for some time they've had a different kind of introduction or pre-show with um, live characters, so there's a man and a woman in this case, uh, doing kind of a crowd warm-up. It's part comedy routine, part trivia show, uh, using guest participants. There's the guest participants engaged in a kind of a battle there. And then uh, while we were here, we took a look at the snack stand, where this seemed new, uh, an R2-D2 churro dipping sauce, churro dipping um, holder, I guess, $16. It looked kind of neat. And we are also here at the um, Hollywood Studios having a look at, uh, this is obviously coming out of order, at the Stage 1 store, this is at the exit to Muppets, where they've added something new. It's only a couple of weeks old. And this is a couple of close-ups first, and you'll see the wide-angle shot in just a moment. Uh, this is obviously the band. Um, there they are. Uh, top some of the merchandise so you get a sense of the scale. These are t-shirts just below them. Uh, and it was added just uh, about two or three weeks ago. One, more, one last view of them from a distance. And then uh, down on floor level, you've got some cardboard cutouts. Here's one of Walter. Uh, there's Kermit and Miss Piggy there as well. Now, Star Wars Weekends hasn't started just yet. It starts this next weekend, but they've already installed the droid, um, assemble a droid section. Now, this is in the uh, Tatooine Traders, the store at the exit to Star Tours. And uh, you can see that it's a little bit like um, Bill Jerome. I don't know, name the device, your um, lightsaber or build your own Mr. Potato Head. It's like that except you build your own droid. And there are various pieces and parts here, like a hat, you have various legs to choose from, a dome, and then a body to choose from. They show you some examples on the, on the top part there as well. There are the examples, so you can build your own. Uh, and the cost of those was uh, $12 for one or $19 for two of them. Now we're saying goodbye soon to Snow White Scary Adventures. You have until the end of the month, end of May, to go ride that. And we're also saying goodbye very soon to Kim Possible Adventure. This was possibly its last weekend that wasn't announced by Disney, but that was one rumor that uh, the last weekend for it has just passed. So there will be um, possibly no Kim Possible after this week. 
We're switching parts to Universal, where I caught this glimpse of an unused zone um, out behind Universal, out to the side of Universal, next to Interstate 4. Now this is where pieces of Hogwarts uh, were spotted while they were building Hogwarts, and it's um, where I have uh, heard privately that Universal owns this land and is thinking about uh, putting a theme park, I'm sorry, a water park in there at some point in the near future. Um, but there's been no activity on it so far, and their water park, in fact, is adding a water playground in their existing wet and wild, so probably nothing is happening with that for some time. Despicable Me's walls have come down. The ride is not yet open, but uh, we'll bring you some coverage as soon as it is. We are here for the Cinematic Spectacular. This is the Lagoon Show, and um, as you see, it uses water waterfalls um, rather than wa um, screens or water screens uh, like they've done previously. And you can see they can use the waterfalls to, to draw things on directly, or they can project things on it. Uh, fairly high fidelity and high quality images show up on those screens. And so uh, the focus is on that central lagoon. There's some fountains, as you can see, and some colored searchlights as well. And then there are a few fireworks to the show as well. But mostly it's about the screens. Now, uh, we were here for a press event celebrating the Cinematic Spectacular, where Universal trotted out some of their better known characters and provided some meet and greet opportunities, as well as a live orchestra into the evening, and even a red carpet welcome, although it ended up raining. The other half of this press event was the uh, Universal Superstar Parade, which is a Disney quality parade featuring uh, the live performers as well as a lot of these um, sort of satellite vehicles that dance around and drive around the main floats. And the main floats themselves are also quite impressive, as you can see. It's uh, really Disney quality when it comes to uh, the craftsmanship, uh, the level of the costuming, the amount of uh, effort that's gone into the detailing and the painting and the, and the bright colors, and they really um, inject a high energy show here, and I found this parade to be extremely worthwhile, um, certainly on par with some of the best Disney parades that um, I've ever seen. So that brings us to the end of another week. We thank you, as always, for your attention, and we will catch you next time.